everybody. My name is Nicole Sudiakal. Thank you for joining us today for our GRID Project Phase 3 Delphi Information Session webinar. It's really great to see so many familiar faces today. Um, before we begin, um, I am the Member Services Manager at Global Skin, and I wanted to go over some housekeeping items for today uh, before we start. So, uh, number one, we will be recording today's session for our members to view on our website later on. Um, and today's webinar will be about one hour long. Our speakers will take the first um, 40 minutes of the session to present on grid. And then we'll have about 20 minutes for discussion for all of you to ask your questions um, and share your experiences or comments. But to maintain bandwidth, we will be um, muting everyone's microphones and videos. Um, and during the presentation though, please feel free to use the chat pod feature at the bottom of your screen to type out any questions or comments you have and we will get to them at the very end of the presentation. We have a really wonderful set of expert speakers and presenters today who will share valuable information. We have Gigi Laframboise, who is a research director at Global Skin. We have Mirosha, um, the researcher uh, at University Medical Center at Hamburg Eppendorf. Um, we also have Vishna Zaborski Breton from our public affairs director at Global Skin as well, um, and Gary Lai, the founder and president of the Hong Kong Psoriasis Patients Association. So from here on out, I'll leave it to you, dear. Thanks very much, Nicole. So thank you everybody for joining us today to speak about GRID. Um, well, we'll touch on the five phases of GRID. Really today's focus is on phase three, the Delphi. And by the end, we will have covered the ground of what the Delphi process is about, your role as the Global Skin Patient Organization members, and the support and resources that we will be providing you to help us with the Delphi. And of course, why your role is so important in this research and project and why we, we definitely need your assistance. So this is really at the core of what we do at Global Skin and of course what you do, and that is serve the patients and your members. And these statements are the future vision of when the grid research is completed. This is what, these are the, the kind of outcomes that we expect from the grid project. And um, we'll be pull, pulling this slide up at the end just to reflect on it, but this is what all the work is heading towards. So there are four main outcomes from the grid project. Now, for those of you who are new to grid, GRID is a five-phase, multi-year project that launched in 2017. And um, these four items, the system, systematic literature review, which has been completed, leads along with the next phases into developing a new global measurement tool, which I'll speak more about, which that tool will be used globally to collect uh, patient-derived disease impact data, which is absolutely critical to the application of the data for all kinds of needed um, causes, such as advocacy, better treatments, better care, um, and health policies, etc. So the GRID project is steered by a very qualified team, and we have two uh, distinguished professors working with us so Professor of Medicine, Dr. Matthias Augustine from Hamburg Eppendorf and Professor Chris Bundy, who uh, together co-lead the research. And they are supported by uh, very um, hardworking researchers, Nero Shah Trilanus Sukhaparan and Rachel Pattison. And you'll be hearing from Nero uh, as she will go into deep detail on the Delphi. And um, we also have Professor Bundy and uh, Rachel with us today, so uh, they can also answer questions later on. So GRID is truly a groundbreaking project. Um, as you can see, multiple firsts, but what really is important is that GRID is the first project in the world of this research project of this kind that is patient initiated, patient focus, and the patient voice is infused throughout the research phase. And this is absolutely, uh, you know, quite groundbreaking because it's not been done before. And what's important to notice is it's on multiple skin diseases, so, uh, and including rare. So this, again, is new work 
And as you see from the two bottom uh, uh, images, there is two outcomes that I want to bring to your attention. One is a new methodology that we call GRIP, so Global Research on the Impact on Patients. And this methodology basically is the process that we're following for the research phases one through to four. And it's a methodology that we believe can be replicated in other disease and health areas. And then the measurement tool we call PRID, the Patient Reported Impact on Dermatological Diseases. This is, um, we we'll kind of call it the golden egg that's coming out from all of this research and the measurement tool in, in science figures it, it can also, spheres it also is called a measure, but we call it a measurement tool that will be uh, developed in phase four. We believe GRID will address these myths the stigmas around dermatological diseases, the misunderstandings, the lack of awareness. And it's not, of course, just the physical. It's the psychological, emotional, um, financial, all of the <clears throat> burden that dermatological conditions cause on patients' lives. And of course, the data. Without data, we are restricted in the decisions that can be made to improve dermatology worldwide, from new health policies to funding dollars to um, you know, even having the ability to conduct your missions. You'll be able to do more um, and, and have that data to rely on, and we hope to uh, be there to support you with that. So as I mentioned, there are five phases to GRID, and today's focus uh, that Nero will speak to in greater detail is on phase three. But I'll just do a brief summary of the other four phases. Phase one and two are complete, and as mentioned, phase one uh, was a systematic literature review, almost 13,000 publications that the team of researchers went through. And uh, they were compared to a, a global standard cause, cause, called COSMIN. And just, you know, all of this information is on our website in great detail, but I'll just summarize that out of all of that analysis, it was concluded that there was no measurement tool, no measure that met the standard A COSMIN um, scale for measuring patient impact. And that just reinforced what we knew um, as for the need to have GRID research undertaken and our new PRID measurement tool developed. So from the literature review, we went into um, almost a year of uh, gathering patient data from primary research with patients. So all continents were represented by about close to 100 individual patients who were uh, interviewed at workshops and on one-on-one -on -one interviews to gather their impact data. And you'll also see the word item and item statements. So um, item and impact are used interchangeably, but in the research we, we use the item. So the researchers, once the phase two data was collected, spent many months, the summer and into the fall, reviewing the items of from the phase two and developing the item statements that you will see um, as samples that uh, Nero will show when she speaks to the Delphi. So when the Delphi is completed next spring, the, the team of researchers will then head into, put their heads back down and work hard to develop that print measurement tool. And uh, once it's drafted, it will also be further tested, psychometric testing, and then launched globally for the meta da data gathering. And later I'll speak a bit more about the application phase five, but that's where we also step up our role in helping get not only the, the data, but the PRID tool out to the world. <laughs> Um, to inform and to support you and others and to advocate for change and, and raising dermatology in world rankings of um, diseases um, and things like the um, DALI, the uh, Disability Adjusted Life Years. 
And this graphic is really just to give you a visual representation of how the phases lead one to another and the scope and scale of, of the growth and um, how phase three is quite important to the development of that global PRID tool and why you know, your help will be really important because we um, have an ambitious goal, but very achievable to reach 2,000 patients. And Nero will speak more to, to how that's gonna unfold. So it's my honor to introduce Nero. Nero is um, a graduate from uh, Maastricht University and has a master's in global health. She is the lead researcher for this phase three under working with Dr. Matthias Augustine, who we spoke to. And uh, Nero um, has been working very hard on um, getting the Delphi ready along with the rest of the team. So Nero, over to you. Thank you, Deirdre, for um, the introduction. Um, so yeah, so to, hi everyone. Um, I'm going to talk today about um, what a Delphi study is um, of phase three, and I'm gonna walk you through the online Delphi survey. So um, a Delphi is an established scientific method used to test and validate research assumptions or findings. And by that, I mean um, it is a structured communication and a consensus technique or method widely used in health research. The main purpose of Adelphi is to explore a topic in a way that is that goes beyond the currently known or believed and is based on the assumption that expert group judgments are more valid and accurate than individual judgments. Delphi studies systematically measure and develop consensus between experts on a topic where there's a degree of uncertainty. The involvement of a group of experts is fundamental to this process. And within Delphi study, experts are defined as a person with a good practical, legal or administrative knowledge of the topic and are not necessarily um, scientific authorities on the topic. And Delphi studies are often conducted across a series of stages known as rounds. And in each round, the experts are asked to complete a survey on the topic of interest. The survey is usually online and consists of statements. The experts are asked to rate um, their agreement with a statement. And this information is used to establish both what experts think and their level of um, agreement on the topic. Grid Delphi will test phase two data findings and will involve two rounds. So for your reference, in phase two, we have engaged with patients and patient leaders to identify a range of issues experienced by people living with dermatology conditions. And we call these issues items. And this was conducted through focus group and individual interviews to create a comprehensive list of items for the new measure that reflect those issues. And so um, the point with the Delphi outcome, so through the Delphi exercise or consensus exercise, the researcher will be able to further refine the items. So the agreeing or consensus method is one of the most, um, is on the most important items to, which will be included in the new measurement PRIT which stands for patient reported impact of dermatological diseases, the new measurement tool. And it will set the stage for phase four. And at the end, we're gonna use all the findings or the results to publish in scientific journals. So the Delphi study is taking place between, uh, from December until March, 2021. In general, the Delphi method does not have a fixed number of uh, participants to be included, and it can vary, for example, from five to 6,000. In our GRID Delphi study, we have decided to recruit around 2,000 or more patients with a dermatological condition worldwide, cover, having a good geographical um, coverage and as many conditions as possible. In in order to be part of the Delphi survey, two requirements must be um, fulfilled in order to be eligible for the participation. So you have to be a patient 
with a dermatology condition and you must be over 18 years of age. Taking part um, in the Delphi will involve completing at least two of our surveys. The surveys will be available online and you will be um, given up to one month to complete each one. The first survey will provide you with a list of issues experienced by people with a dermatological condition and ask you to rate and rank how important they are to you. Um, you will be then asked to identify any important issues you think um, are missing from the list provided. We will then ask you to complete the second survey a month later. The second survey will feature an updated list of issues which is based on the results of the first survey. And this will help us to identify which issues people with dermatolog dermatological conditions think are the most important to include in the new measurement tool PRID. And I would like to um, highlight that the participants from round one will be asked again um, to participate in round two. No new patients will be included in the new round. And this is very important in the Delphi process that we maintain the um, engagement with the participants over the rounds. And um, uh, the last point is um, that we have um, translated the Delphi survey into six languages, English, French, Spanish, Arabic, German, and Mandarin. I'd like to briefly go through the steps of completing the Delphi online survey and show you afterwards examples of how the pages look like. So first of all, you are going to be presented with a landing page that include um, a short introduction and the link to the patient information sheet, which explains in details the GRIT study. Furthermore, you are able to select one of the six languages. Secondly, you will be forwarded to the registration page to fill in the consent form and it is required to tick all the boxes. As mentioned earlier, um, the, these two eligibility criteria need to be filled in. So you, you have to be above 18 years of age and diagnosed with a germ condition. Afterwards, you will be giving um, your email address in order to receive an email with a unique patient code and the patient must register online with the password before um, proceeding to Delphi. You will be then forwarded to the demographic questionnaire and I'm going to show you in a bit what this questionnaire entails. At last, we have the Delphi survey, which is the core of this phase. And after completing this survey, you will receive a reminder for the second survey for round two, which will be launched in February. So this is how the landing page looks like. Um, please make sure to read um, the instructions when you go page by page. Here you are able to select one of the languages. You will have a short introduction and two hyperlinks. Um, one hyperlink is um, with regards to the patient information sheet, so patient information. And please take your time and read carefully this information in order to get more detailed information on this study. It includes information such as um, on the benefits of participation, possible disadvantages, confidentiality, etc. For more information on the GRID project can be found under the hyperlink, click here, and you will be referred to the Global Skin website. So if you click on the registration um, submit button, you will be forwarded to this registration page to fill in the consent form. It is required to tick all the boxes according to the um, ethics committee guideline from the Cardiff University um, to participate. And um, it is required to tick all the boxes um, in order to acknowledge that you have read and understood the GRID patient information document and that and you are agreeing to participate participate in this grid project. So this is an example um, how the slide um, looks in Mandarin. Thank you. Um, so once you have ticked all boxes, the eligibility criteria will appear to be filled in. And at the end, you also have to give your email address and you can click on the submit button and you will receive an email with the link to the um, to the patient ID code with instructions to create your um, password in order to proceed with the survey. So this is the GRID um, 
Delphi questionnaire. So we are asking demographic questions in order to gain more information, information about the participant, and it will allow the researchers to better analyze the data. This questionnaire entails questions about age, gender, location, skin type, what germ condition you have, etc. And some of the questions will be required to fill in and they are highlighted with an asterisk symbol. So um, this is the final step of the process in the Delphi survey. And again, please make sure that you read the instructions. The Delphi survey has in total six categories, the physical impacts, daily responsibilities, psychological impacts, social impacts, financial impacts, and the impact of healthcare. And it is a list of issues or statements experienced by people with dermatological conditions. And these are basically the findings of phase two presented in this Delphi survey. And we will ask you to rate and rank how important um, these statements are to you. And you will also be asked to identify any important issues you think that are missing from this list provided. And you can fill in the missing information um, at the end of each category um, into the open text field. Thank you. And uh, now I will pass you over, over to Nicole. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much, Nirosha, for um, your presentation. I'll leave it now to our Director of Public Affairs, uh, Vishnu zaborski Breton. Thanks so much, Nicole. Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure uh, to see so many people on this call today. I know that so many of us have heard about GRID over the years. We've, we've all participated in uh, in-person events at our conferences um, about the project. And so I think it's such an exciting time that we are finally at a place uh, where we can include more and more of our members and um, patient your patient community in this project. Um, I'll be taking you through some of the resources and tools that have been developed by Global Skin to aid you in reaching out to your patient community to participate in the Delphi. Global Skin has recently redeveloped uh, pages on our website specific to the GRID project. Under the tab research on our homepage, at www.globalskin.org, we have developed several pages uh, that are dedicated to this project. Uh, we encourage you all to have a look. Uh, we launched them just several weeks ago. Um, and on the website, you can find information about the project. Uh, there is more information about the specifics on the phases, the five phases that Deirdre mentioned earlier. We've created um, a page where you can meet the research team, how to get involved, and the science behind GRID. The deeper dive can um, help give you more context around the phases and the outcomes. Um, we obviously today are speaking a lot about the Delphi stage, but so much work has already taken place on the project, and it will also give you an opportunity to learn about how PRID will be used once the tool is developed and the advocacy work uh, around that will happen in phase five. Um, I encourage you to share the, the Global Skin uh, URL listed here with your colleagues, with your stakeholders in your communities. If anyone is looking for more information about GRID, um, this is really the go-to place. Um, there are videos and infographics. Um, there's quite a lot of information here for you to use, so we encourage you to visit. So on Monday, uh, Monday is the day. Um, we are currently working, uh, Deirdre and the researchers are working very diligently right now to um, put together the final um, touches on the survey. And we are anticipating a launch on Monday. So on Monday, you will receive an email from Global Skin talking about the launch of the Delphi study. At that time, we'll, uh, in the email, you'll receive links to a campaign toolkit, to the survey site itself, and to um, all the information that we have prepared for you and to help you reach your uh, patient community. As Nero and Deirdre have mentioned, we're looking to um, have 2,000 and plus patients uh, take part in the Delphi study from all uh, regions of the world and all disease areas. We prepared uh, this campaign toolkit. Uh, actually, Nicole, you can go to the next slide as well. This, the campaign toolkit that we've prepared for you includes templates, 
It has an email that you're going to be able to share with your patient community talking about the Delphi. It will have a, a specific uh, link right to the survey site. It will be a copy and paste that you can easily share with your patient community. We've prepared a newsletter or blog post that you can also share on your website. Um, you can share this with stakeholders um, and a larger network of dermatologists, healthcare providers. We have uh, social media posts, both the text and the image cards, which you will be able to download from our website. Um, as I mentioned, the direct link to the survey. I know that many members uh, connect with patients in other ways using WhatsApp and other social channels. So we'll encourage you to share the direct link to the survey. Um, as was mentioned, the survey is available in six languages, uh, and as such, we have also translated the toolkit in those six languages. So the toolkit was, is available in English, Spanish, French, German, Mandarin, and Arabic. So we're really hoping um, that that will um, assist you in your, in your countries and in your regions to reach as many patients as possible during this time. Um, and as a reminder, the Global Skin um, URL where uh, you can direct all of your questions and uh, look for more information to find videos and such, uh, globalskin.org slash research. So we'll look forward to you all using this toolkit and um, we welcome any feedback you have on it. Um, phase three and the Delphi is really um, going to be the uh, you know, the, the prep time for phase four. When we launch PRID, um, hopefully, I think it's going to be at the end of next year um, or early 2022, we will be doing this again, but we will doing, be doing it on a larger scale where we want to reach millions and millions of patients. So this is kind of the dress rehearsal. Um, we look forward to your feedback. We look forward to your participation. Um, like I say, we're so excited to finally be at a place where we can uh, encourage our members to participate on a wide scale. Thanks so much. Thank you, Vishnu. And I'll just re repeat that um, your help in promoting the um, Delphi is, is really important. Um, we do want to reach at least 2,000 patients, but we don't have a limit. And I'm sure the researchers would be happy to have <laughs> as much rich data as possible. Um, and I'll just also reinforce that the survey will run starting uh, December 14th, Monday and go through to the end of January. We, we don't have an exact stop date. We'll base it on how the data is coming in, but right now we're looking at around January 20th. So um, it will be running through that whole time and then uh, there'll be a pause while the researchers regroup and then work on the second survey. And then that second survey launches probably early February and will run for a month. So in order for us to do the best job that we can, we look to you, the members, to, to help us. And what um, we have here on the screen is what we call our patient organization member review group. And we went out to, um, to this list of members and asked if they would help us by being critiques of the Delphi. And they were selected basically um, on geographical and language reason, uh, re, you know, the, the, they speak the language of the Delphi. And uh, I want to thank all here because they've been really helpful in reviewing the Delphi, going through page by page and line by line and giving us valuable feedback. And um, last but not least on the list is Gary Lei Hing Kwan. And uh, next slide, please. I have the honor of introducing Gary. Um, Gary, who is the founder and president of Hong Kong Psoriasis Patient Association. In his day job, uh, Gary is a business analyst and as he said to me, spending hours um, with data. So I guess data means a lot to, to Gary and we're glad uh, he's here to speak to his work. Um, as the founder and president of the Hong Kong Psoriasis Patients Association. So over to you, Gary. We are the first dermatological patient group uh, established in Hong Kong. Uh, it, we are so, we, we, we now have around 300 members. 
uh, our mission is to arouse public awareness of skin problem in Hong Kong and the and um, psoriasis in Hong Kong bear a very bad name here. And our, one of our mission is to make a proper name for psoriasis and, and to educate public uh, and educate patients to access the proper treatments. Uh, we, uh, one of our, our role is to advocate to government to provide better treatment for our patients. So, um, we're really happy to have Gary here to speak with us all, and um, I, I'm going to leave my video off so we can we can focus on Gary. Uh, and this is just an open question and answer. Um, feel free also uh, to to add your questions on the side, and Nicole will try to include those. But Gary, we want to talk to you today about your experience um, in uh, with outreach strategies that you've. Um, led with your patient community, particularly ones that involved a survey. Have can you speak to to anything that you've done in that area? Okay, um, in our area, we uh, in it, over the, the the past few years, we also we also have uh, a local surveys through the uh, say Google. Google, uh, Google, Google Forms, and use, we also make use of the hard copy to distribute to the to to our members. But the scale is very small, and we are glad we have a chance to um, to join this global survey and um, uh, and join with our partners in as a global level. And uh, this will make our voice uh, bigger and louder. To our, to to everybody, and and uh, uh, this is a good tool to everybody, to to our government, and uh, the and the legislator as well. Uh, in the in the past, uh, we uh, we we, are, we have the problem in uh, quantify the uh, qualitative data in a um, in a proper manner, and. Uh, and uh, now we have a good chance to do so now um yeah is it is it challenging for you to get an audience with the government for for the advocacy do they um, attention from yeah the, yeah yeah uh, in the past it is very difficult uh when we when we face the uh, government officials we tell the story uh, but the government, in return, asking me uh, whether we have a solid data and the quantified data to 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 prove to them uh, the the say the gap of the the service gap they have, um, what is the um, how, uh, how how much uh, the patients need uh, to make the um, to make the treatment better. Uh, we we are lack of this kind of data. Uh, and and we we can only tell the story, but cannot have the solid data. This is the 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 weakness in the past we have. Absolutely. Now, so, um, yeah. So now we have a good chance to 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 have a um, a a a better format uh, questionnaires. Uh, is they standardized and it is uh, the the main. The, the the special thing is uh, this survey is not led by the, the um, academic, uh, but uh, the patient also participate in the in the survey. This make the 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 the, um, the survey is a a unique one. Well, and and I'm very happy with with how you answered that because this is exactly what the grid project is about. It's it's having patients voice. But it's creating that data, and that PRID tool will have data that's of a high quality that can be used for all kinds of purposes, especially policy um, as well. And, and this is where patient organizations can help get the message across to their, to their patients. And um, Gary, the toolkit we put together, do you think that has everything you need to, to get the message to your patients? Yeah, I think so. the The toolkit is very useful. Uh, it's a it's a good communication tools to our members as well as uh, we we can line up with other dermatol uh, 
with other skin problems, uh, patient groups like the eczema group uh, that we seldom uh, contact with. And uh, it is also a good way to um, connect with where this is patient groups, um, as well as the dermatologists and rheumatologists, they are also very interested in this project. So this is a, this toolkit can serve a bridge between different parties. Excellent. Okay, excellent, Gary. Well, I think we'll move on to, to the next slide and there's time um, at the uh, question and answer period to ask Gary more questions. So thank you, Gary, very much. So I've pulled back uh, here the, the phase five slide just to reinforce again um, that once the research is done, the PRID tool has launched globally and, and will stay open um, and, and a data set created when the PRID tool launches. One, a, a data set that we see being used as an open source for all kinds, but Will Global Skin and others in the dermatology community um, worldwide will have opportunity to use the PRID tool. And our role will be then moving into both the local, national and international level to disseminate the PRID tool, to promote more publications and research, support you, our members, and um, how to take advantage of the PRID data sets and advocate, um, as I mentioned, for better policies and improve rankings. And as mentioned, you know, this is, this is our future state, our vision where we want to land from the grid projects, right down to the patient's voice um, benefiting and their lives improving because of the grid project and the PRID tool and the data that will be produced. So this brings us to our question and answer uh, session that Nicole will lead. So please um, feel free to add, put your questions in. It's really wonderful that we have uh, Professor Chris Bundy here and the two researchers. Um, so I would suggest you take advantage of having their, their brilliant minds um, and uh, feel free to, to ask questions. Thanks so much, Deirdre, and thank you to all the presenters today for providing more information on GRID, and especially to Gary for providing your, um, your perspective from a patient organization perspective. So I, I see that there's been a lot of questions um, and also answers in the chat, and maybe I can um, ask the folks who asked some questions to unmute and start your videos as well if you would like to ask the question yourself. Um, but number one, we have a, a question here that I believe was not yet answered um, from Laurence. Um, Lawrence, would you like to ask the question yourself? If not, I can go ahead and read the question. Oh, um, can you hear me? Yes. The, the, uh, the question was how was about sharing the results? Uh, how are we in, how do you um, intend the, getting the, the results back uh, or the data back? Are you going to do it by per disease or globally? I mean, how do you intend to do it? Because we hope that it's per disease because Again, if uh, patients will have different impacts depending if they are depending on their age, depending on the disease they have. So, uh, will you? Um, how how will you get those results back to us? And the other question I have is about um, the length of the survey. I, I, I read this. I I, I have you know I, I reviewed the survey uh, this weekend, and. Um, even if you think that it might take 30 minutes to fill, uh, that might be a lot for some patients. And uh, we were wondering in the APPF if there would be a way where you could just do it uh, per impact, you know, saying like if you could, if you could section the, um, the survey, having it, you know, so, you know, so, so, for, so, so that you can answer uh, one time the, the physical impact, then the psychological impact, then, you know, to, to break it down instead of, instead of presenting the whole thing to, um, as a whole, you know, to people. Chris, I'm, I'll, I'll obviously defer to Chris on the question about the data presentation. Laurence, I just, I just want to mention, um, thank you very much for your review help. And I just mentioned everybody, the survey um, can be stopped 
and you can leave and then re-log back in another day. Mm -hmm. So there is a way that you can spread it out and, and it's going to run for almost six weeks. So that's how people who find it long can take to take their time. So Chris, I'll hand it to you now. Thank you for that question, um, Laurence. It was, um, it's very relevant. Um, we're building a generic measure in the first instance. So what I mean by that is it um, is a new measure for people who might be living with psoriasis, atopic dermatitis, eczema, vitiligo, um, a whole range of other rarer skin conditions as well. But what we're also doing is collecting the data from people living with specific skin conditions. And the reason for that is that we will try and adapt this measure to um, make it more specific to people living with specific skin conditions. So for example, um, somebody living with a mild form of acne probably will have different issues than somebody living with a rarer skin condition and a more severe form of it. So all the data that you give us will be analyzed, um, but it will take time for us to be able to build um, specific measures. In the first instance, we want to build a measure that we know represents the majority of people living with a range of skin conditions. And at the same time, not completely in parallel, but there will be overlap in terms of how we help to build these generic measures. So it's a very important question. In the first instance, just please be patient with us while we analyze the data for the generic measure. Um, because if we were to go s right into um, a condition specific measure, we would lose some of the um, data that we've got so far. That's why we've tried generic measure first, and then we will focus on specific skin conditions later. So I hope that answers your question. It, I realize that it may not satisfy people who are living with very specific skin conditions, but this is a very lengthy process. For it to have the scientific validity um, that will speak to the funders um, and help to develop policy, we have to be really robust with the methods that we've used um, and the data that we have to ensure that we can defend it in the same way that we would be defending um, any other scientific findings. Thanks. It, it, it would be the same thing for us too, to be able to use it as an advocacy tool, we'd have to have the data concerning our specific diseases, but I know it will take time. Of course, and resource, you know, we have to be realistic with what we can do with an envelope of resource. But thank you for the question. Thanks so much for for your answers as well, um, Chris and Deirdre. We have one more question from Isabel who has to leave soon. So I'll, I'll go ahead and ask her question. Uh, or Isabel, if you'd like to ask uh, the question yourself, please go ahead. Isabel had asked, uh, how are you engaging the dermatology community and how do you hope they will use the data? Well, I can, I can just give a summary of um, the outreach campaign that we are conducting uh, starting on Monday is gonna be incredibly comprehensive. So from, of course, all our members, we've also brought in an international um, market research company that specializes in health. So they'll be focusing on the wide dermatology community, everything beyond the non-patient um, organization. Um, so national dermatology associations, nurses associations, patient groups, there's all kinds of, um, we've seen their database list of, of extensive list of who they're reaching. Um, and then through all our networks, we've got a social media campaign launching. That's the push to get the participants. And then once we have the Delphi underway, we'll be maintaining and reaching out to the dermatology community um, going forward and in preparation to launch the PRID. So there's some awareness we have to do to, to launch the PRID, um, the, the, the Delphi, and then lead into the PRID, but we'll be advocating and starting campaigns starting next year. 
on a much bigger scale. Can I follow up on that question as well, um, uh, that response? Sorry, I'm trying to type and talk at the same time, and that's uh, challenging at the best of times. Um, just to remind everybody that um, members of the dermatology community have been very involved with this project from the start, um, either directly in terms of the researchers and the dermatologists, um, Professor um, Augustine, that you know, and myself. Um, but in addition to that, we've reported every stage of the process at big international um, and national and indeed local meetings. So we, we, right at the outset, we have um, spread the knowledge about this study um, to as many members of the dermatology community that we can touch. And that will be part of the strategy going forwards. So we will um, always be interacting with people in the dermatology community, um, getting their critique of what we're doing, conveying the latest findings to them, um, and of course, we're wanting them to activate their, their additional networks within dermatology to spread the word. Thank you so much, Isabel, for your question. And thank you also for your answers, Chris and Deirdre. Um, we have some, uh, about four or five more questions before we close out for the day. Um, I have a question from Kelly here. Kelly, if you'd like to unmute, please feel free to ask the question yourself as well. Hi, um, nice to see everyone here. This is a really exciting project. I just wanted to ask, um, will patients be responding when the condition was at its worst because many of us go into remission or even resolve over time? Uh, absolutely. Um, the, the survey and when you see the items, the item statements, it's, um, it's worded in a way that it's asking you about your life dealing with your condition. So it's not in the moment. Um, Chris, you might want to speak more to, to that, but it's meant for you to address it from a whole perspective on your life. So it's not just in the moment of your condition. Yes, I'd second that. Um, we will have such, we're hoping, we'll have such a, a wide variety of responses that we will capture people who are um, managing their condition very well and it's, it's not um, a huge burden to them at that moment in time, as well as people who are really suffering with either a flare of their condition or in fact the condition is not very well controlled. So the, the, one of the reasons why we want to have so many people involved with this and the next Delphi stage is so that we can balance out those people um, who have a sort of mild um, life impact and those who have a more severe life impact. And we want to capture across the board how this is impacting on people's lives um, and that full range. So um, we're not targeting any specific group. We're not asking people to remember back to when it was particularly bad. We want their views on how it's impacting on their lives and let them make the decision about whether they remember the worst time, whether they're answering it um, as it is currently impacting on them. We have one more question. We have actually quite a few more questions and we'll, we'll make sure to get to every single one. Um, from Antonella, if you'd like to uh, unmute and ask the question yourself or, and, and your, your video as well, if you'd like. Hi there. Um, thank you so much. I was very much looking forward to this update and how we can be involved here in Canada. Um, my question is around um, accessibility and if there's any opportunity to have people fill out the survey by phone. Um, we've been thinking a lot about this in terms of what's happening with virtual care and so I thought I'd ask if that's an option for people. It's not, do you mean voice activated? I mean, um, ha having somebody go through the questions with somebody by phone versus um, having them fill it out online. It's, it's not set up that way, um, how, how we are collecting and uh, managing the data. It's really just through the online website. Okay. So again, keep in mind that this is our, our dress rehearsal. So it's, you know, these are the kind of issues that we want to look at and consider for the PRID tool. So feedback from, from, from that perspective is welcome as well. Okay, super. I appreciate that. I just wanted to make sure that that wasn't an option so that I was aware when we're yeah. helping to share. 
I also see a question, um, I'm gonna go ahead there, Nicole, from uh, Bernt on um, how about good uh, representation of all the diseases? And uh, there's a second question. I've seen this question a few times and Chris, maybe you can answer it after I answer the first one. It's, uh, I've seen two questions about how subgroups of diseases are gonna be represented. But just let me answer uh, Bernd on the first part, which is um, how are we reaching multiple diseases? I mean, there are thousands. Uh, we're doing the best we can on that. We, um, and that's basically through the networks that we have profiled and have a database. So we're trying to make sure that the disease range of, of outreach is very wide. We're also gonna be tracking every single week um, the, the, the responses by disease, by region, and um, then amping up the strategy to reach other diseases and other regions. So it's going to be an all hands on deck with the uh, market research company and our networks um, and pulling in all of our international contacts on this. And, and Chris, uh, the question on sub-disease groups, I've seen two. One about how they're going to be recognized and how the data is going to be recognized or presented on a sub subgroup of a disease. Okay, in the first instance, um, it's important to say that we've been advised um, by Professor Augustine as to which conditions, um, dermatological conditions, skin diseases, to target in the first instance. Um, it's not exclusive because you, you, you will know that there are um, hundreds if not thousands of, of different um, skin associated diseases and dermatological conditions and subgroups of them. Um, so we're working with the ones that we would hope we would get good representation from in the first instance. Um, yes, we are linking with groups developing core outcomes. We, we're working, uh, we have um, the idiom uh, people uh, represented on our steering committee, uh, the idiom group, and um, Dr. Alice Gottlieb, as, as you know, is part of our um, steering committee, and, and she's instrumental in the idiom group. Um, so yes is the answer, and um, we would be looking to make links with uh, CREAM, the Nottingham group that you, you probably are familiar with because of your AD links. Um, so the Home Initiative, you're quite right, right rather than cream. Um, the group is called the Home Initiative. So we're trying to make as many contacts with other people who may be doing similar activities to us. And of course, um, Professor Andrew Finley is also part of our steering group. So we have a steering group of people who have been intimately involved with developing measures um, either in the past or, or currently. So that's the first thing to say. Um, yes, so um, actually ACORN for acne, that's, that's a really good suggestion. It's, it's not a group that we have linked with so far to my knowledge, although um, either Nero or Rachel Pattinson will come in and correct me on that if I'm wrong. But if you've got good suggestions of people who are um, developing core outcomes or new measures, please let us know because we would like to be as inclusive as possible with this study. Your answers, everybody. We have a question from Bill uh, McHugh. Bill, if you'd like to um, unmute and ask the question yourself, please feel free as well. Will, will organization leaders uh, be told uh, uh, which patients have participated. I've got uh, 2,300 um, members of the uh, of a PRP group, and uh, uh, I've got about 1,800 of those I have email addresses. So we can get a pretty good response, I suspect. But uh, we did a similar project with, well, not similar to this by any standards. UCLA uh, built a 574-person uh, per cohort and they wouldn't let tell me who signed up. <laughs> so I had to go to everybody and keep asking them over and over again who signed up. Will, will, pick, will, will we know, will I know that um, 25 people signed up and who they are so then I can focus on the people that haven't signed up? 
I'll, I'll just briefly, th thanks for your question, Bill. I'll briefly explain the process on the uh, Delphi website and the privacy issues. And then Chris, maybe um, you can add to that. Uh, when your member, the patient registers and puts their email in, that email is then coded and they're provided a code, but all of that information is anonymized. And um, the, the way that um, the site, the website is programmed so that if a patient has not completed the survey, um, they can, they'll get an automated reminder from the website, only, only coming from the website. Um, then the same email database that's kept in confidence will be used for survey two. So your role as a patient organization will be to send reminders, will prompt you. Um, but at this point, because of the privacy issues, we're not sharing the, the um, who has responded and who has not. It's a confidential, confidentiality issue. I thought that would be the case, but I just wanted to check. Yeah, okay, good question though. The last question, I believe everyone's an, um, questions have been answered. Um, but if you do have any remaining questions after this webinar, we encourage you to reach out to us at any point um, to ask these questions. Um, but maybe I'll, I'll leave it to you, Deirdre, to for the next slide. The next slide being um, just, we want to thank our sponsors. We'd not be able to um, run this project and have uh, Chris and Dr. Augustine. Um, and so it's very important to recognize our supporters. Um, we would not be able to, to, to do this work without them. And uh, so that brings a, to a close the, the webinar. Thank you all so very much. Um, welcome your questions and feedback at any time. We'll do our best to keep you informed. And please watch for the um, email coming from our comms team on Monday to uh, launch the Delphi. It's, uh, we're all very excited. It's been a long, long process to get here. And uh, we really look, uh, look to, to you to uh, help us make, make the uh, phase three Delphi a success. Thanks, thanks everybody.